Hello, I'm Dr. Mohit Kira, Professor of Urology at Baylor College of Medicine, and today I'll be discussing the penile prosthesis. The penile prosthesis was actually invented at Baylor College of Medicine in 1973 by Brantley Scott, where he invented the first inflatable penile prosthesis. Over the decades, there have been numerous other treatment options for erectile dysfunction, including a vacuum erection device, in penile injections, and even in 1998 when we finally developed Viagra. I divide treatment options for erectile dysfunction into three categories, first line, second line, and third line options. Most patients receive first line therapy, which is oral medications, Viagra, Levitra, Cialis, and even the new medication, Stendra. If these don't work, many men will go on to second line therapy, including urethral suppositories, penile injections, and even a vacuum pump. If these no longer become effective, roughly 5% of men will go on to having a penile implant or occasionally corrective vascular surgery. I think it's very important that before a man decides to have a penile implant, he's aware and has tried many of the first and second line therapies. The many causes for men receiving a penile implant, they're organic causes. We know that diabetes is a cause for erectile dysfunction. In fact, diabetics are four times more likely to have erectile dysfunction. Men with cardiovascular disease are also more likely to have erectile dysfunction. Men after prostate cancer surgery will have erectile dysfunction in many cases that will go on to receive a penile implant. There are other causes of ED that will result in a penile implant, including priapism, which is a prolonged erection, which causes ischemic damage to the penile tissue, trauma to the penile tissue, and finally, Peyronie's disease, which is an abnormal curvature of the penis when it's erect. You should realize that patients should be informed of the intraoperative and postoperative complications of a penile implant prior to proceeding. First is that some men will have loss of penile length I explain to patients that they should have a gentle stretch on the penile tissue, and that's the size it will be when it's erect. The penis will not be larger after a penile implant. Intraoperatively, there can be a urethral injury or a cor corporal perforation. Intraoperative complications are very easy to manage as long as they are identified. Postoperative complications include infection, malfunction, and erosion. Infection rates are roughly 1 to 3%. Malfunction rates can vary. Typically, 95% of penile implants are functioning well at five years, 85% are functioning well at 10 years, and roughly 70% of penile implants are functioning well at 15 years. And roughly 1% of patients can have erosion of their implant. It's important, as I mentioned earlier, for patients to try different medications prior to having the penile implant. Realize that after the penile implant is in, you no longer will be able to use these medications uh, in the future. This is what an inflatable penile prosthesis looks like. This is called a three-piece, and it's the most commonly used penile implant. There is a small reservoir which holds water or normal saline, usually behind the pubic bone or under the rectus muscle. There is a pump that's placed into the scrotum, and there are two cylinders that are placed into the penile bodies. When a man takes off his clothes, you would not be able to know that he has a penile implant. It's innocuous. When he squeezes the pump, the water or the normal saline comes from the pump and fills up the cylinders and induces an erection. After the man finishes engaging in sexual activity, he releases the pump and the fluid goes back into the reservoir. Patient and partner satisfaction is greater than 90%, and these patients still have orgasm and pleasure and good sensation. It's important to also realize that when I talk to the residents, I explain that there are three parts to this surgery. It's the implantation of the cylinders, the reservoir, and the pump and I'll go through these with you briefly. There are also surgical considerations. Where do you make the incision? Is it infrapubic or penoscrotal? What type of cylinder should you use? It's important to use the exact size. The reservoir placement, should it be placed behind the pubic bone or under the rectus muscle? And also the pump as well. 
If a patient is unable to have good manual dexterity, it doesn't make sense to put in a three-piece prosthesis because he will not be able to pump up the pump prosthesis. In that case, we will use a one-piece or a malleable. There are anatomic variances in patients. Some patients may have had a hernia or some scarring that you should be cognizant of. And you should also know how to manage complications. As I mentioned earlier, if you catch a complication early, it's very easy to treat. This is the incision that's typically made. It's a three centimeter incision that's made into the penoscrotal junction. This is the incision that I typically use. There are no other incisions on the body. We're able to place the entire prosthesis through this tiny three to four centimeter incision. Choosing the place and the right location for the reservoir is important. As you can see in this slide, this is called an ectopic placement of the reservoir, where the reservoir is placed under the rectus muscle. In some cases, I will place this reservoir behind the pubic bone. Also, in my patients, I tend to leave a drain. The studies would indicate that there's no increased risk for infection, and it does increase the bleeding within the scrotum if you do leave a drain. What should patients expect postoperatively? My patients stay one night in the hospital. I let them go home the next morning. The next morning, I remove the drain, the Foley catheter, and the dressing. Postoperatively, I see my patients after two to three weeks, and I ask them to begin cycling the prosthesis. At six weeks, they're able to begin using the prosthesis. In summary, patients should be aware of the other treatment options for ED prior to proceeding with a penile implant. Patients should understand the risks of a penile implant, including infection, malfunction, erosion, and potential penile shortening. The penile prosthesis offers an excellent treatment option for men suffering from erectile dysfunction. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this video.